Unbelievable year for Collingwood. They lost to the uh, one grand finalist by six points, the other grand finalist by one point. But you move straight away to list management, and here was former coach Nathan Buckley speaking about that this morning. If Brodie Grundy leaves Collingwood and, and Collingwood brings in Daniel McStay and the net effect on the salary cap is nil, I don't understand that at all. I don't have any inside knowledge. I don't know what the plans are, what the commitments have been made. But if that ends up happening, and I will never know, then I can't see how that is a win. It's a good point by Bucks, in my opinion, because I thought by losing Grundy, it was freeing up uh, sort of a salary cap room because they're in trouble. But they bring in McStay, they and bring in still, Bobby Hill. And they're still paying some of Grundy's money. Yeah, and they bring in the, the Adelaide Crows, uh, you know, tall. The three yep. of those guys, if that cancels out Grundy's money, I don't think... How, Frampton. Frampton, yep. I don't know how it makes them any stronger, Cara. I just don't understand why Brody Grundy doesn't want to stay at Collingwood. Mm. And just take take $200,000 pay cut. After tax, it's not that much money. I just think for his brand... Not that much money. For $200,000. Not not when, when your career goes for ten years. He's got how long's the deal? Years. How long's the deal got to go? Of another four or five. Another years. salary cap's going to go up twenty thirty percent. What's he on? Eight hundred thousand dollars at the probably, moment. Probably a million dollars. You'd a say. Mi- oh yeah. come on. What, he, what I'd say though, Caro, is he will he will be a happier person if he stays at Collingwood. I, I believe that Melbourne, if they get their act together, have more of a premiership chance next year than Collingwood, or the equal of. Yep, I, I agree with that. So why wouldn't you stay on full whack and you're still a chance of winning a premiership? No. I'd so just, this is the issue though, Hutchie. So. They are ranked in these areas. So, yes, they won, got to a prelim and got close, but it was off the back of their back line. They lose stoppage, it goes in there, good back line, they repel. I think clubs will go to work on that and they must improve in this area. And that's Darcy Cameron and Cox they're relying on. So, it's a big, Plus big loss. Plus, their draw is going to be a lot tougher. A lot tougher they as well, through. you're right. And, yep. and you have one good year, you get started pretty hard, Hutch. And this was Cameron, who you're a big fan of, and you touched on that yep. for the year. He was much better this year, but he was non-competitive in stages on the weekend. Yeah, he ran out of steam, didn't he, yeah. in the end? And maybe that was a, um, part of the responsibility being new, and he was outplayed by Higgy on the weekend. But I was just put a little bit of extra question mark in my head on the Grundy strategy, I must admit. All been on one game. And uh, Ash Johnson was their other unsung hero, for parts of the year, then he was widely acclaimed. He went into the finals in good form, but he had a pretty poor final series, Lord. I like it. his numbers fell right off from his home and away. Um, there would be a question mark now, 0.7 goals average in the finals, whether they can hang their hat on him as the key forward in the next year. Yeah, oh, I don't think he's a key forward, Hutch. I think he's a number three at best. Um, he was drafted pretty late, so it was a bonus what he did. He's still in, in the first. They're bringing in another number three, though. In McStay? Yeah, but it but, doesn't give you a lot of hope that they've got. But, McStay's got no excuses because he's played 150 games. This kid's played under 10 games, so you've got to give him time.